So uh, welcome back. So today I just wanted to go over uh, a question that I found on um, on Reddit um, uh, about f it was uh, posted about four months ago, and the question was how realistic is it to become a professional racket stringer full time? And they wanted some general advice on that, and I just thought this was a real good question to answer here since I'm kind of about racket string and professional stringing, and that's kind of where I've been, and so. I thought I would put my two cents in and um, hopefully that'll help somebody out there. Um, so, yeah. So answering that question, you know, first thing I think about are the three primary areas of. Um, so if you're thinking about, you know, is it really feasible to do it full time? So, number one, are there certifications for that? Um, not really. A lot of times you can get training. Um, some of the teams um, on tour would 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 require you to maybe train with them a little bit to make sure that you're um, complying with their exact way that you, they want you to do things because some some teams are like that they want everybody to string the exact same way um, for consistency um, so that kind of you know comes uh, around that um, the next thing uh, training again that would be partially from that um, you can also get training through like the USRSA has some training modules and then also the ERSA has training and the ERSA actually has professional racket stringing um, training uh, modules and resources that they have so if you specifically want to string on tour they actually have some resources and training that you can go in person or, or also online to get um, to get certified that way and that might help you get in the door um, and then of course your experience you need to of course have you know strung on computerized machines be familiar with uh, a myriad of different stringing patterns and knots and feel comfortable stringing quickly um, and so forth you know so those are just some of the real basic things that you know to think about for yourself like you know if it's even feasible but then of course the big question is the pay so you know there's different ways that you can get paid um stringing professionally if you are on a team like let's say the wilson team or maybe the head team or something like that and um you are stringing at a tournament. Um, generally, you're not all, not all the stringers are going to be there every day. Usually, as you become better and they get to know you, you might be there for the whole duration because it takes a different skill during different parts of the tournament. So, like many times, um, if you're new, you might be there at the beginning, kind of when there's a lot lower tiered players as well. So there's a lot more work. Um, then kind of as, you know, you start getting to the smaller draws, the uh, segment of the draw where there's less players and they're going to be a high, higher caliber of player. Usually the more experienced players maybe will be part of that for a longer period. Um, sometimes if you're helping set up or also being part of, you know, tearing down the whole thing um, with the team, you might, you know, be part of that. So just kind of keep that in mind. You might not actually be there for the whole tournament and generally a grand slam or a tournament um you know top 16 tournament would generally be about you know uh, if it's normally a two-week tournament you it would be total about a three-week window that there would be stringers there and if it's a you know think about if it's a one-week tournament it might be a usually like a two-week um duration that you would be there so kind of keep that in mind so sometimes you do get paid daily like you, you might get paid like 300 dollars a day and that includes your food that includes you know snacks whatever you know basically while you're there um and uh you know some teams will also provide the hotel room while you're there um usually of course you're going to probably share that with some other people other stringers um and uh sometimes you might actually get paid for the tournament for the whole time they'll, they'll just say okay you're going to be here for 10 days we'll pay you this amount i haven't seen that uh, too much um and then uh sometimes you'll get paid per racket so maybe if you're new or you're uh it's not one of the major on-site stringing teams 
you might get paid per racket because you know only as 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 the rackets come in you're going to get paid um so how much will you really make a day well i mean you know i would say anywhere from you know two to three hundred dollars is pretty typical maybe a little bit more once you get better um but of course once the tournament's over then you no longer have a hotel room um and then it's like um, usually the transportation to and from the tournament is up to you um sometimes there's other benefits like you get you know some free string or you get some free gear or you know some sponsorship stuff at the tournament um sometimes if you get a bunch of string then maybe you can turn around maybe you know sell that or use it in your shop or wherever you, what else you're doing afterwards but um uh, you know many of the stringers will go from one tournament to another to another um so most likely you're gonna have to travel you know quite a bit um, sometimes you can work it out, you know, some, some of the stringers will kind of go to tournament to tournament and they'll hang out together. And after a while you kind of figure out like where to stay and, and the way to make it kind of, um, financially feasible, but you're not going to get rich off of this. <laughs> um, for a lot of people, it's just kind of the supplement, you know, their, whatever they're doing at home with tennis. So whether you're a teaching pro, whether you're a player and, you know, um, or maybe you're you have a shop or you work in a shop it's a great way to promote yourself and you know show your expertise so a lot of times you know you, you'll be in the shop when you're at home then when there's a tournament you'll go string and then you come back to your shop and so forth um, but to do it full-time is really difficult i know there's a few people that i mean i, I know some people that do that full-time and it is you know workable but financially um it's probably it's going to be probably difficult financially to really make that work um, unless you can basically live on nothing um, because uh, you know there's a lot of expenses and it's usually the expenses going from place to place that that you know would would incur incur that money so I would say you know to go back to that question how realistic is it to become a professional racket stringer full time I would say it's it's really there's only going to be a few people that really do that. I would say get into it. If you really want to see what it's like to stand up all day and string 15, 16 hours for a duration of a week or two or longer um, and just be stringing at a rate of about three an hour on average, because um, you can't just, you know, take your time and, oh, yeah, I just want to string this racket, you know, 45 minutes, whatever. No, they're really expecting you to be able to get, you know, almost three rackets done in an hour kind of thing. Um, it's fun, good experience, good for a little while, but you might want to have some money in the bank and not really do it as a, as a financial means. So it's not, I don't, I don't really consider it a realistic um, thing for people who want to do it for a longer period of time and actually uh, make a living off of it. It's, it, it might help your living in the tennis realm, I mean, I guess in the tennis industry um, for a short while. Um, and you might enjoy it and find other, you know, you get connected with other people on tour and maybe you want to do other things related to it um, as well. Um, YouTube or, you know, filming or, or video or writing or um, if you're really good at tennis and you can be a hitting partner, um, sometimes when they need extra people to hit with some of the players or something like that, you can do that or, or maybe run a stringing team or something like that. Um, it's more feasible, but I'd say it, it's a pretty lofty goal and it's, it's really difficult. I don't see a whole lot of people doing it full time. So anyways, that's my two cents on that. Um, I hope that answers that question. And my, I know there's probably a lot of people that have that kind of question out there. So um, anyways, um, drop me a, a question or a comment if you are there or have done it as well and have a different perspective, please, you know, let me know. And always happy to talk about that if you have, you know, anything further you want, want to discuss on that. All right. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.